Holy beta, a full three plus hour stream full of bizarre gameplay. With hints, leaks, and reveals for new cards, new encounters, new game mechanics, stell, jewels, and so much more. Take a look at the timestamps to see if there's anything that might particularly take your interest. Uh, they should be down below. And while you're down there, why not hit the like button? It's not been scientifically proven, but it's entirely possible that the more likes we get, the more likely we are to see even more of these new bizarre gameplay streams. So please do click that button. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at what we find out. Now, as we go through all of the updates we got from this incredible gameplay, I'm largely going to leave some of the gameplay running in the background. I'm going to slightly speed it up and cut out any of the bits where Raynad was just talking. So you guys, if you missed the stream, can actually at least get to watch some of the new gameplay. So uh, watch that and uh, listen to me. Here we go. A lot of new cards were revealed to us, from the updated Atlatl to brand new cards like Ganjo, Alien Axe, and Lifting Gloves. Some of those even being these new neutral items. Neutral items drop from NPC fights and make up a good chunk of your early game build, at least in the current playtest version. For information on all of these new items, the wonderful Lyzerk, Swampsy, and Anton from our Discord, link below to that if you want to get involved, are updating a new version of the Community Bazaar Item Library. I'll include a link to it in the description and maybe even the pinned comment unless one of you says anything pin-worthy, so go check out all of the awesome new items. We may cover some of them in lists in later videos, but there are way too many to cover in this one, so we'll glance over a few as we go through some of the other juicy things, but if you want all of them, go check there. Speaking of cards, it was briefly mentioned twice, firstly as combining and secondly as fusing, but it seems like there will be a way to merge cards together later in the game. This isn't in the game yet, but if I had to guess, it would be a means to increase the volatility of your build in the later game. So you aren't at full build by day 5, like Raynad was in most of his runs in this stream. Day 5 is now barely halfway through your run though. They experimented with a maximum of 10 days, with either 8 wins or 3 losses ending the run, but they are now back to a maximum of 10 wins and 3 losses again. So we're at 12 day runs, which means more trophies for us. The trophies which were also revealed in this gameplay, they are what you get from each PvP win or draw, and your trophies from the run are added to your account at the end of your run. And assumedly there is something we can spend them on, they look like one of the currencies we saw in one of the late, uh, latest art updates. Finally we got another sort of reconfirmation from Raynad that this game is definitely seeking out some longevity. Um, it's going to be a living, evolving, drafting experience that never gets stale or solved because they are constantly able to keep it fresh, even if it's just adding a single merchant or encounter in these sort of regularly weekly or bi-weekly updates. Don't take his word for it exactly, he was just sort of spitballing at this point, but the general point seems to be that they're going to regularly update the game with small little changes to keep things interesting, and then every three or so months, don't ascribe numbers to it actually, I'm just giving you a rough idea, they'll do a larger patch to sort of reinvent the game at the time. I generally like this way of patching as the way that most competitive big scale games are able to keep going for years, so I look forward to playing this one for just as long. Moving on, let's take a look at some of the encounter gameplay we got from this weekend. We have a new-ish end of the day encounter, uh, Kina has been kicked out and is replaced by Forger once again, and we now see the formalization of spells. These are consumable one-time effects that are not added to your board, and unlike the previous versions they now visually look different, albeit with what I believe to be temporary art. The way new Forger works is so, you can pay one gold to use the leftmost spell to heal some health. Forger then resets and you can choose to do this as many times as you want, healing to full if you have the money. This is the only option that does that reset thing though, every, every other option sends you into the fight. The rightmost option skips the phase and goes straight to the fight, but the middle options are the interesting ones. Each of these lets you drop all of your gold for permanent stats. It was sort of 5 gold for each strength or 1 gold for each speed etc. These are interesting, but I think Forger is now all too skippable. If you need a bit of health from fighting too many NPCs, that's great. And this is good for late game because you might have a lot of spare gold. But I'd like to see Forger maybe offer some one-time free buffs, like Keena did in the previous version we got to see, at least in the early game, so we aren't just skipping a full encounter. The NPC fights have also been recalled a little as well. 
There are now a lot more of them, and most of them have custom items to fight with, and custom hero powers which define them and help tell their story and give the team a way to design completely unique encounters. But we also now have a treasure chest at the end of the fight, rather than just gold. Which, let me just say, who doesn't like seeing treasure chests after killing a mob? It might be the MMO RPG inside of me, but it just kind of feels right. The chest will have a value, let's say 3 gold. And when you open your 3 gold chest, you will see 2 items and a pile of gold equal to the chest value, so 3 gold. Uh, in this instance, the items could be worth more, but they are neutral items that may not synergize perfectly with your build. So, maybe you don't even have space for one of them and you have to take the gold. Or it's a toss up between which of these neutral items you want and whether it will affect your build in its entirety. It's yet another strategic decision that I'm happy exists in the game. The encounters that affect later events are now also in the build. We saw this in a number of ways, Farai the Courier which we saw revealed in the latest Bizarre Update appeared, effectively blocking two of your board slots for a fair few days before returning though to offer some insane buffs. You could restore one life, you could gain some gold, or even be given an artificial heart item, which when you reach zero life from the first time in a fight revives you to 50% and gives you some speed. Another instance of these continuous encounters were the little Ingle doggos. Each time you fought one and defeated it, later ones would get stronger thanks to their pack loyalty power, increasing the damage for each previously defeated doggo. And I can't speak about crazy new encounters without mentioning my current favourite encounter. And maybe favourite's the wrong word, at least in terms of power level, my favourite encounter. And that has to be Dabora the Nexus. The receptionist robot, I guess? knows and talks to everyone, and as such she has some powerful options to offer you. She can restore a large portion of your health as you gossip over lunch, she can set up a meeting for you to purchase items from other classes, or she can extend your choice of PvP opponents from 3 to 5. Now, we don't actually have any choice of opponents right now, but it was suggested on the Bizarre Discord, links to that below as well, and Raynad confirmed during this stream while talking about Devora that they are working in the ability to choose from three opponents at the end of the day. So, not only do we see some more awesome events, but Deborah also revealed more strategic choice in the bazaar, and something a lot of people have been asking about for quite some time now. You can finally, somewhat, choose your opponent. And that wasn't even the craziest thing that happened in the stream. We finally got to see Jules in action. The character who I have said multiple times I will main just based on the fact that she's a four-armed chef of pureness. And because I want to cook a dragon egg. But all that aside, this is our fourth class reveal. And with it comes the spiciest class mechanic to date. And we thought Stella's altitude mechanic was cool. Jules' mechanic is all about feeding. Makes sense for a chef, right? What does that actually mean for the gameplay? Well, it works a little bit like damage. You have items that hopefully add up to a bigger number than they have in health but you never actually damage the enemy. Jules isn't a bad chef, her food doesn't hurt, but if you enjoy it too much, you might just eat so much that you pass out. That at least is the premise. Jules feeds your character with each of her cards, adding to the little blue or purple bar at the bottom of your health bar. Reminder, I'm colorblind. This rising bar represents how full you have become. And if at any point it goes past your red current health bar, you pop and she wins. We even got to see a full Jules win in action against Reynad's Pygmalion build. Here we see the full power of a feeding machine. I know it looks like Pygmalion, but the artwork for Jules just isn't in the game yet. She has four mysterious hero powers which must do some amount of buffing, because each of those cookies is feeding the opponent for 96 every two or so seconds depending on her speed. Which by itself is crazy, but coupled with the ice cubes which freeze every time adjacent items feed, then... Reynad's sluggish three item stall build just gets completely frozen out, while he gets fed up. And we see here one of the main powers of feeding over damaging. It doesn't care for healing or shielding. Reynad's build has a lot of both, but he never takes damage. There is nothing for the shields to tank, and he never loses health that needs to be healed. He's just sneakily fed through it, and eventually pops. Man, I, I cannot wait to play Jules. I must also add that we did get to see some stealth battles too. Sadly, most of them only lasted a small amount of time and it's almost impossible to see what they were doing with Stell's altitude mechanic, especially with it being the most tactically demanding of the ones we've seen so far. But we did see her reach an exceptional level of speed. 300 speed generated within the fight between her items and hero powers. 
I can see some scary stale builds on the horizon when she's balanced out a bit. But she's lost basically every time this, uh, this stream, so let's give Stell some love and hope to see her competitive in the next stream. Finally, the news you have all been waiting for. The bizarre beta and launch dates. And for the umpteenth time, I'm afraid this was a debate. You skipped to the end of the video for nothing. I'm afraid we didn't get any dates. Raynad's new position on beta and launch is that the game will be ready when it's ready and will be thankful for a good game. Now, he isn't wrong, I will be thankful for the good game, uh, and I do look forward to it when it comes out, and I want it to come out when it's ready. I am not trying to rush them at all. However, this is even more unambiguous than his previous stance of just this year back in June. I'm now on the 2022 train then, I guess. I doubt we're going to be getting the game this year. It looks really good, and they have done a lot of work since June. But there is still loads of polish to come. Dooley and Mac aren't in the game at all yet, and Jules and Stell have only just been added. They've undoubtedly done a large chunk of the work, but that final 10% of work and polish takes the longest amount of time. So, strap in. We're long hauling this to 2022. Now, with such a large road ahead of us, it would only be wise for you to subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so you can uh, get notified whenever I drop a video. Especially some important ones, like whenever gameplay comes around. Probably, I don't know, how long was it last time? Three, four months? Yeah, just in case you forget. Uh, so yeah, definitely subscribe. Like the video as well. It really does actually help the videos. Uh, and this is an important one to get out there because we got to see so much. The game has changed considerably since the last time. I've been Gamesplay Greg, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.